Unchained by Van Halen. And I'm making this video just a couple of weeks after Eddie Van Halen passed away. And, you know, there's been a lot said, a lot written, a lot of videos made and whatnot. So I'm not going to get into that whole thing other than to say, I think he'll be always, no matter what happens in the future, I think he will be maybe the greatest guitar player, rock and roll guitar player that's ever come down the pike. Just an unbelievable talent. Anyways, let's get into this. So we're dropped down oh, a half step. And then we're in drop D. Okay, so I'm to my tuner on here. Our low E string is going to be C sharp. So we've got C sharp, G sharp, uh, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and D sharp. Now, um, when you're tuning your guitar, like, you hear that? That, that B string is flat. Now, if I get on my tuner and get it perfectly in tune, when I play these thirds, can you hear that dissonance there, that harsh, abrasive sound? And that's with the true temperament tuning, you know, you get that. <laughs> when everything's perfectly in tune, it sounds like crap. So what Eddie used to do is he just flat that B string a little bit. Just get it to your tuner, like right on, and then drop it down a little bit. Now listen. You hear how sweet that third sounds now? It gets rid of all that harsh dissonance. Okay, so that's the first thing you gotta do. Uh, and then we've got the opening riff. So we've got. Okay, just awesome. And I know everybody's going to be asking about the sound that I have. And I actually picked up a Kemper profiling app a little while ago. I haven't put it on my gear page yet. I've still got to do that. And I bought these um, this pack by a guy called Top Jimmy. And it's, um, it's the Van Halen pack. And that's exactly what I'm using. I'm just going straight from my guitar, straight into the Kemper and and using that and and he based it on um let me see here, i'm going to pull it up he he based this off of uh a 1968 marshall super lead and before it went into the lead he went into a, an mxr 10 band eq like eddie used to use and then he was using a variac as well when he made these profiles and then into a marshall 4x12 uh, with 20 watt greenback speakers. Okay, so those are the, the stats on how we got this. And that's uh, like for my Les Paul, I turned up the um, the treble and the presence a little bit just to make it a little bit brighter. And then when you turn on the flanger, which is the flanger in the Kemper. With the reverb and everything, it's actually pretty convincing. Now that we've got all that stuff out of the way, let's get into teaching it. We're going to start like this. It's just the D chord to the D sus4. And the song starts on the and of four. So when you count it in, it's one and two and three and four and, right? And there's five hits on that low E string. Two, three, four, five, because you're starting on the end of four, right? Now we're going to go down to this um, B flat, and we're going to do that. And a lot of guys you'll see will go, they'll, they'll strum every one, but you know, if you pull that off, it just makes it sound so much better. So. And we're hitting that low E string in between. So. And then we're going to go. So we're up to this F. And we're going to pull off that sus4. And then we're going to hit the C note. Muted. Right? And you, you want to mute it enough so you're just getting that. You know, you don't want to go. Right? It's... 
and then we repeat, but we're coming on the one this next time through. So we've got two of those low E's. And that's on the one now. So because it's on the one, we only hit the low E string four times there. So let's do that whole bit. And that's where the band comes in. And when the band comes in, we're on the off again. So this cycle and the next cycle are off. And the rest of the time, it's on. Okay, that change. That's the off. But when you do it on, it's... So that brings us into the verse. And that's going to sound like this. Alright, so we've got no flanger on at this point, and we're going to come on the off. So we got the low E to the C note on A3. I mean, I know that's not a C note because we detune, but I'm just, you know, we're keeping, just pretending we're not detuned. Right? Up to the D note. So, there's a little double on that. And then we're going to go a fifth fret A, third fret D and G, and that's like, it's like a big flat, right, with a third in the bass. Then up two frets, and we just go back, G, B. And bum, 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 bum. same thing, right? So. Now we're going to go up here, and we're going to hit the uh, tenth fret of the D, tenth fret of the B. right in on the off. But we've got the low E in between. And we do the same thing except we just go forward. Right? And then All right. So, let's go from all right and then we're into that part and there's a bunch of variations on that verse Right, so sometimes he'll go. Other times he'll go. In live he'll go. Just arpeggios, F, C. But what I hear mostly is that one and that one later on. Okay, so you can do those a little bit different here and there. And then down here, uh, he, at some point he goes. We've covered that one, but sometimes he'll go. Right? So there's always little variations in his playing. I'm sure he would play it different every time.
because he was, you know, a great improviser. So that's pretty well it for the verses. Um, and now we'll just move on to the uh, pre-chorus. You know, I remember when I first learned this, or when I first attempted to learn this song, you know, way back in the day, you know, I was, I was excited because it's like, you know, oh man, I'm playing Van Halen, this is awesome, and it's not even that hard, right? And, you know, that was the way things went a lot of times in the early days when I was learning how to play guitar. I would get the first bit of the song, I'd be super excited. And then you get to the next section, and you'd go, what the hell? And you couldn't play it because it was just, you just didn't get it. You didn't understand it. And I think this next section is how a lot of people have felt or feel about it. Um, it's just, it's like, what is that? You know, it makes no sense when you first hear it. I'll just play it. So we've got... And, you know, I just remember just being absolutely baffled by that, kind of similar to um, that bit in Black Dog, you know, that sort of middle bit that's just off time. And it just doesn't make sense in your head, right? Okay, so I'm going to try and simplify that for you. So we'll come out of this. We slide that down. We turn this way down. And we're gonna go like this. So it's just fifth fret G, seventh fret D. And then we're gonna use our middle finger to hit that uh, fifth fret E string. Now, you see some guys do that? They'll, they'll move that over there. But I find that really awkward. So I just use my middle finger. And, and how I got that, was I was watching a Phil X video, and I'll put a link to that on my website, and it's called Going Down the Unchained Rabbit Hole, I think is the title of it. <laughs> and, it, you know, if, you, if you're watching this video, you know who Phil X is. Phil X is awesome. I love that guy. I love his whole shtick, you know, his attitude, his playing, everything. He's the coolest guy ever. And I was watching him play it, and that's what he does. He goes, use that middle finger, right? And once you do that, it's so much smoother. Okay, so that's the first figure. Then we're going to go, we're just going to slide two frets down to the third, back to the fifth. But in between, we've got that down up, um, like strum, right? So just work on that. The best way to work this lick out is to do it little bits at a time. Then we're going to get our first finger and hit the E and the A string, fifth to third. So, so far we've got... Then we've got another down up. And then we do that first figure again. But then we go, instead of going down, we're going to go from the third up to the uh, seventh. Okay, so. All right, and then we've got. Um, That's a duplicate of the one down lower, right? Exactly the same. And we're gonna end it up with... And that's the hardest part of it, right? Just gonna get this E string. It's a little better. Um. Right, that's the hardest part because you got to go from there to there, right? And now we're just going to go seven, six, five, three, and we're back to the main leg. 
Okay, so super cool. Like, I, and this to me is just um, that is Eddie. That is how he was. He just like to him that probably came really naturally and easily because uh, he just was on a different kilter than everybody else. Just seeing things completely different. Um, that's why it's so hard to play like him because you know before you play anything you have to understand it you have to understand it in your head you know you have to get it and then your fingers will do it no problem because that's not hard you know technically but it's understanding it that's the toughest part so let's do um, coming out of the verse let's head into that pre-chorus <laughs> Okay, and I'll just do that really super slow, so. plays it a bit different over the solo. So what he does there is he goes. So it's all single notes. So that's D5 to E5. And then we're sliding down from D5 to D3, or E5 to E3. And then that, right? So coming out of this. It's uh, just a little bit different. Okay, so that's it. That's the hardest part of the song by far, as far as the rhythm goes. So all that's left now is the breakdown. And um, I think the breakdown is actually a phaser, but in my demo, I just used a flanger, but put a phaser on here. So we're coming out of this. We just hit this A chord, right? And turn our volume way down. So we clean it up, and then we're gonna do this. So we just got that, um, it's like a D sus4 over an A bass. And again, the timing in that is a little weird, so you have to really listen to the track. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Then. Right, that open A, and then the D and G string. back here and they just is really bizarre like where he goes right so it's just a pull off from the 14th of the G and B it's a double stop and then and you know the timing on that you just have to listen to it right and eventually it'll kind of click in your head and then he goes back down here and he hammers on that sus4. And then it's harmonics, uh, G and B on the sevens to the twelfth, and then da, 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 da. right? I think in my demo I kind of screwed that up and went I did two on the A, when it should be just one on the A. 
and then you know it kind of stops and as you stop that you turn your volume up And then the ending is just, so we've got that F chord, just the D, the G and the B string. And then I just went to the G and the B. I'm not sure exactly how he was doing that, but that is pretty close. And then you hit the D. And if you're really, really picky, you'll notice that that is flat, right? You know, the thirds are great, <laughs> really sweet, but the fourths and fifths are kind of like flat. So you can compensate. Just pull on a little bit, right? Just This is really subtle stuff. So in that last chord, you can pull on it. And it'll just, you know, bring it into pitch, right? And on that last chord, I also just, just for fun, I, I took my, my E string down with the tuning pick, because I don't have a whammy part, right? So I just went. You know, just to kind of give it that sort of whammy effect. Anyways, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoy this. I um, hope it helps you to play it and understand, especially that, that, that pre-chorus part. And uh, Eddie Van Halen, just, an absolute monster of a player and I think he'll be always, no matter what happens in the future, I think he will be maybe the greatest guitar player, rock and roll guitar player that's ever come down the pike. Just an unbelievable talent. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time.